Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 33. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, we are building an incredible community at EntrepreneurOnFire.com. If you're starting or running a business, you simply have to check out the free resources we have for you. Also, every interviewee has their own dedicated page with a full recap and contact info. Come join our awesome community at eofire.com and reach out to me with any questions or suggestions you have. Entrepreneuronfire.com was created for you, so come on over and help make it stronger. And now give it up for our five-star reviews. MarketStreetSoapworks.com, April Powell, Laura of FamilyFunAndYum.com, Glenn Stansberry of Gentle Mint, Stephanie Sammons of Wired Advisor, Social White Boy, and Maybelline Parodies. Thank you so much for supporting the show, and I look forward to thanking everyone who does the same. Okay, let's get started. I am simply electrified to introduce my guest today, Barry Davenport. Barry, are you prepared to ignite? I am indeed. There is smoke coming up from my feet. (laughs) Oh, perfect. Barry's main blog isn't about online business per se, but she does write about one of the most important things an entrepreneur has to master, the mental game. She was a public relations professional for 25 years. She's also the editor of The Daily Brainstorm and A-List Blog Marketing. Barry, I've given a little overview about your business, but why don't you tell us a little more about who you are and what you do? Yeah, I'm so delighted to be here, John. Thank you again for inviting me. Um, yeah, I, I run Live Bold and Bloom, and that is the, the main platform for my business. I'm a coach and a personal development writer. I'm coming out with a book in November uh, called The 52-Week Life Passion Project. Um, and I'm also about to launch a new site, BarryDavenport.com, that will be focused on just helping people find and live their life passion, whether it's through their work or through an avocation or a hobby or a lifestyle. Um, and my passion is just really about helping other people reach their fullest potential, move forward in their life, and find a way to feel like they're doing something meaningful. Well, we are all about living with our passions here at Entrepreneur on Fire, so I'm really looking forward to delving a little more into that later in this chat. But let's move on to our first topic here, which is a success quote, because here at Entrepreneur on Fire, we like to start every show off with our guest favorite success quote, it's kind of our way of getting the motivational ball rolling. So Barry, what do you have for us today? Yeah, I love that. I think that's a great thing to do. I have a quote by Howard Thurman, who is an African-American author and philosopher, and it goes as follows. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, and then go and do that, because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Wow, that seems to fit in so well with your entire business makeup. I just really love that you pulled that quote. I've heard that once before in the past, and it really resonated with me. So I look forward to linking that up in the show notes, and maybe we can learn a little bit more about, it was Howard Thurman, you said? Yes. Perfect. I will make sure to link that up in the show notes. So, Barry, how would you say that you actually apply that quote to your everyday life or mentality? Right. Well, you know, as you mentioned at the outset, um, it's really what my work and my life is all about. It's what what I'm centered around right now is helping people find what makes them come alive. And of course, that's what makes me come alive. Um, When you're passionate about something and really engaged, you're you're fully engaged not only in your passion, but you're engaged in life. Um, Because the passion that you have for whatever you're doing spills over into all different areas of your life. So if you're, you're loving your work, People around you are going to feel it. They're going to be more attracted to you. It's going to, you know, impact um, just it's like putting sunglasses on and the whole world looks better. Um, And there's a huge energy exchange going on when people are passionate. It serves themselves, but it also serves the world at large. Great. Thank you for sharing that. So we're going to move into our really our first main topic, which is failure. 
or not specifically just failure. It could also be a major challenge or an obstacle that you've encountered at some point in your life. Because at Entrepreneur on Fire, we really delve into the journey of our spotlighted entrepreneur. And that's you today, Barry. So we're really excited to hear about your story. And just like every entrepreneur, we've all experienced a failure or a challenge or a major obstacle. And we don't let those failures per se define us as a person, but we really use them to make us grow as a person. We learn from them and we move on either in a different direction or forward through that failure. Can you give us an example of a failure that you've encountered and how you reacted to that failure? Well, I, I guess the failure would be that I, I lived for a long period of time in a state of fear and self-doubt. Um, I, I was really at a point in my life when my oldest child left home uh, to go pursue her own passion. She's uh, an aspiring ballet dancer. Um, and I had spent a lot of time helping her and focused on her career. Um, and when it came time for me to refocus on myself and on my career, I, I totally didn't have any passion or enthusiasm around the work that I'd been doing in public relations. Um, but I felt like I didn't have a passion. I felt like I, I was um, too old to learn new skills, that there wasn't anything that I would be good at, uh, that it was too late for me to learn something new. And that fear and those those beliefs that limited me um, were really my failure because without them, I was able to do great things. Uh, but with them, I stayed stuck. That means a lot because you really gave the kind of aerial view of where you were at that point in your life and how you reacted to that. I would kind of like to dive down now to the ground level and let's go to a point at where you've already launched your career in the online world. What was a major failure that you came up across or a major obstacle that you encountered early on in that journey? Mm -hmm. The major ob obstacle for me was um, the technology of actually creating a site and understanding HTML and understanding how to um, just navigate the whole online world. You know, I... I came of age when computers were really dinosaurs, so I was not familiar or comfortable at all with, you know, developing a website or creating a blog. I didn't even know what a blog was, you know, a few years ago. So overcoming that fear of technology was huge for me. Um, but fortunately, the passion that I had for the work I was doing, for the coaching work and um, the self-development work and helping other people was enough to drive me past that that limitation and that fear around it. So let's kind of pull out some major lessons that you feel like you've learned from these failures or challenges you encountered. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the main lesson is that never underestimate yourself. You know, you're, you're um, capable of far more than you think you're capable of. And often the things that you fear are the things that you really need to push through the most. Because just taking the time to learn a little bit about uh, computer technology has opened an entire new world for me. Um, and, you know, by resisting it and holding back and thinking, you know, I don't like that, I can't do that, um, it held me back from something that was really amazing. I, I took the time to take a course on blogging and I've read and researched and you know, I'm bright enough to figure out some basic things. It's not rocket science or brain surgery. Um, you know, it's not my favorite thing in the world to do, but I do it because it's a means to the passionate end that uh, I really love and what drives me every single day. So you gave an example that you took a blogging course. Let's pull out a couple really specific examples of actions that you took to get over these hurdles in addition to that. In addition to taking the blogging course, um, gosh, well, I read a ton of great blogging blogs and online blogs like um, Think Traffic and Pat Flynn's uh, Smart Passive Income and Pro Blogger and Copy Blogger. Uh, and then, of course, I took that course with um, uh, Leo Babauta called A-List Blog or A-List Blogging uh, and became a member of their Bloggers Club. So you learn a lot through just reading and 
um, taking courses, but also I made a real point of interacting with other bloggers. And I think that's huge in the online world that you reach out to other people who can be your mentors, who can support you, who might eventually be able to partner with you. Um, you know, it's unusual in the online world that um, unlike in, in most businesses, there isn't that level of competition. There's a network of support and collaboration, which is really beautiful. It's just a very unusual model in the business world. Um, and so it was well worth my time to uh, sincerely reach out to other people and, and see how I could help them and how they could help me. I really just can't stress enough to our listeners how warm the online community is. You just have no idea when you're kind of outside of that community. And you think that it may be a closed off community or people may be kind of stuck in their own world. But as Barry just alluded to, it was so incredible to me to come in to this online community and to have such a warm reception by so many people. It's just such a unique and special place. And that's why I really try to stress to our audience here at Entrepreneur on Fire, until you really actually dive in and give yourself a chance to experience the online community, you really have no idea just how open and welcoming it is. And is that what you found, Barry? Absolutely. I absolutely did find that. And everyone is so um, excited about what they're doing that, and of course you work in isolation a lot because you're by yourself with your computer. So the, the energy combined with the desire to, um, you know, connect with other people really makes it an exciting place to, um, to meet people and to learn new things. And what's interesting to me is that everyone has something slightly different to bring to the table, some different level of experience or expertise that can balance out what, what you have to offer and what you might be missing. I find that I've done some collaborations with people who are stronger in, in areas where I'm weaker and weaker in areas where I'm stronger. And so it's been a, a beautiful kind of partnership. And that's always fun is, is being able to connect with other people who, who uh, provide that balance for you. It is so much fun. And two of the people who you've brought up, Pat Flynn and Corbett Barr, Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income, uh, Corbett Barr from Think Traffic, are right. both friends of mine. They've been on the show. They're just great, great individuals. Really enjoyed having them on and getting to know them as people. They're just both very genuine and open and willing to to talk to somebody that is interested in what they're doing, which they are so passionate about, and it just really shines through. Now, speaking of Corbett Bar specifically, and you said you have taken some online blogging courses, have you ever taken his How to Start a Blog That Matters course? I haven't taken that course, but I have worked with um, Corbett one-on-one. -on -one. He has been really instrumental in helping me with my uh, new site that's about to come up, the BarryDavenport.com. Uh, so a lot of what he teaches in that course, uh, he and I worked on together on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And that was wonderful. Uh, Corbett is so full of integrity. And, and that's another thing I find in this online world is that you, you know, of course, there's a whole group of people that you have to be careful of, but there's there's definitely a big pool of people who have so much integrity and really, um, you know, want to go about this in a professional, uh, business-like but warm manner. And that's refreshing. That definitely is refreshing. And I'm really glad that you're sharing that with us. So we're going to transition now into the next topic, which is the aha moment. Now, obviously, as entrepreneurs, we have little aha moments every single day, and they help inspire us and propel us forward into our new venture. But every now and then, we do come across this huge light bulb moment where this light just comes on, it's so clear to us, and we know that this is just going to resonate so well with our audience, with our clients, with our listeners, whatever medium you're using. Barry, have you had an aha moment, a major one? Yeah, I think I had a major one um, when I was had just finished up that blogging course that I mentioned to you, uh, the, the A-list blogging course. And the woman I was working with on the course um, had, you know, she herself had learned so much uh, about uh, the technology around blogging. And, and she was a right brainer like me. I was an English major and, you know, I write about personal development. Um, 
and I remember asking her, you know, how did you do that? How did you learn all of that? How did you, you know, how did you not get frustrated? And she said, you know, you just do it. It just, you know, if you want to get it done, you find a way and you just do it. And I realized, you know, that's absolutely true. You don't have to sit around and ponder, can I do this? Is it going to be hard? Am I going to be able to figure it out? You just start doing it and somehow it all unravels for you. You find a way. Um, And that was an aha moment for me realizing I don't have to limit myself to the things I thought I was only good at. I can become good at other things. So what were some specific actions that you took following this aha moment? Well, you know, I, I don't know if I remember specific actions immediately following, but I will tell you that um, within the last year, I started a site called A-List Blog Marketing that's all about helping people with their blogs and marketing their blogs and creating blogs. So... I was able to translate my fear into knowledge and that knowledge into action and that action into something that um, helps other people. So, you know, it, it it transformed from a fearful idea into a um, successful reality. Barry, have you had an I've made it moment yet? An I've made it moment? Well, I think I have those moments um, regularly when I realize that I'm actually doing work that I love from my home, sometimes sitting in my pajamas and getting paid for it. You know, I I don't know that I've had this moment where I think, oh my gosh, I'm a huge success. I don't feel that way, especially when you're working by yourself, you kind of, you don't think about that. But I have it when I'm thinking I can get up and go take a walk right now or I can grab my computer and go up to Starbucks and have a coffee and do my work. You know, it's just being able to create a lifestyle um, that sustains you both emotionally and mentally and financially. Um, That is so exciting. I I can't encourage people enough to give it a try because it really is an amazing way to live. I'm truly glad that you have that outlook because one of the blessings and curses of being an entrepreneur is you never really feel like you've quote unquote made it because you're always pushing yourself to that next level, to that next goal. And as soon as you reach it, you just set these new goals higher and further up the ladder. It's so important to kind of take a deep breath, look at your surroundings, see what you've created and really appreciate it and then continue to to move forward in that in that direction that you have set for yourself. I'm really glad to hear that you are able to do that A great thing to do is to really write down just positive things that you're accomplishing on the course of every day. Because sometimes you can look back and just say to yourself, man, I feel like I have so much to do and I'm just not accomplishing much. But that little journal of just bullet points of positive things that you've accomplished can be such a mental positive that I just really recommend it to everybody. Yeah, John, you know, actually in my my coaching work, Uh, And when I was trained as a coach, that is a huge, huge thing uh, that we encourage clients to do. It's it's called uh, acknowledgement. You you need to stop and acknowledge yourself for the things you accomplish because you can get lost in the doing of things and forget about uh, basking in the successes that you've had. That's a great way to put it. And in a way, it's kind of a, a subconscious imprinting on your mind when you're actually writing the stuff down. You may not think that it's actually doing good for your mental psyche, but subconsciously you're imprinting that you're accomplishing stuff and you're going to take on that persona of a person of accomplishment, which is so key in the online world. Absolutely. So Barry, let's move forward now into your current business. You've shared with us some challenges you've had in the past. You've shared with us an aha moment that you've had that's allowed you to reach the levels that you're, that you're currently operating at today, which is so exciting. What's one thing that's really exciting you about your business right now? Yeah, I would say it's the work that I'm doing to create this new site that uh, will launch in about four weeks, uh, barrydavenport.com. Uh, it's the next level for me. You just mentioned, you know, we all have these goals and wanting to reach the next level. And 
I've been really excited that Live Bold and Bloom has created such a nice community of people. Um, I'm out to about 13,000 subscribers right now, and a lot of my subscribers are very interested in how to find their own thing that makes them come alive and how, uh, even more importantly, how to um, put that into their lives. Because it's one thing to say, yes, I have this dream to be a writer, but you know, when you're trying to pay the bills and make ends meet, how do you actually transition from from your job to being a writer? Or if you can't transition, how do you become a writer on the side? Um, so that's what this new site is all about, is helping people figure out, you know, uncovering that thing that's inside of them that, that really resonates with them, and then how to find a way that practically and uh, logically fits into their life and, and pull that passion into their life in a way that works for them. So I really enjoy um, you know, doing that work, and that's what I'm going to be doing on this site. I also love starting new projects and working on collaborations. I'm working right now with Leo Babauta and another blogger, Katie Tallow, uh, to launch the Habit Course Self-Study Program. Um, this is a course teaching people how to create new habits that stick with you for life, how to create sustainable habits. And we've taught that as a live course, and now we are releasing it as a course that people can, can follow on their own. So, in fact, we just launched that today, that self-study course, uh, and we're really excited about that. Wow. Well, you have a couple really exciting things going on, and thank you very much for sharing those with us. It's really exciting to see where you're taking your business. Yeah, it is exciting. So, Barry, the word entrepreneur is a mystery to most people. They just scratch their heads sometimes, and they're like, what the heck does an entrepreneur do during the course of a day? I don't get it. At Entrepreneur on Fire, we really like to pull back the curtain and show that being an entrepreneur can have a lot of differences to a typical traditional job, but at the same time, there are a lot of similarities because we all have tasks that occupy a good portion of our day every day. And though, although no two days are identical, there are a lot of commonalities. So can you share with us two specific tasks that you find occupy a good portion of your day? Sure. Um, the main one would be writing. I'm, I post regularly on my blog, and I really try to write posts that are um, very solid, uh, as, as Corbett would say, epic posts um, that have a lot of good information, practical information that provide solutions for my readers. So I take a good amount of time writing these posts. Doing uh, Often they require a little bit of research, um, and then once you write the post, there's a lot to do after that in terms of just laying it out and choosing a photograph and um, spreading it on social media. Um, you know, so that can take three hours or four hours of a day, depending on the length and the, the depth of the post. And then another thing that I spend a lot of time on is, is my coaching work. Uh, I, I get clients through my work as a blogger. And so I do spend time doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with people um, either by Skype or telephone. So that's not specifically related to, you know, handling my, my, uh, my blog or my site, but it, it's work that comes through my site. Perfect. Yeah. What vision do you have for the future? Um, well, my vision would be that I continue to connect with more people around the world. You know, that's, that's the exciting thing for me once I discovered, um, working online is that you're not just dealing with people who live in your town or your city. You can reach millions of people around the world. Um, and I want to do that, of course, through my, my sites, my blogs, my books, courses, the articles that I write. You know, so I will continue to do the writing. I'll probably come out with some more books, more courses. Um, but what I really love doing through those things is pushing people past their perceived limits. Um, and helping them to find what makes them come alive. I love how you keep saying come alive. It ties so well back in with your quotes and just a great mentality to have. Really come alive. Yes, absolutely. So Barry, we've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning rounds. Okay. This is where I provide you with a series of questions and you come back at us with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Does that sound like a plan? <laughs> I hope I can provide amazing and mind-blowing. I have no doubt, Barry. <laughs> okay. 
What was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? It was not truly believing that it was possible to make a livable income from being an entrepreneur. You know, thinking that it would just be little dribs and drabs of things coming in that I really couldn't create a, an income that could support me. But that is not true. Um, you can make a great income working online. What is the best business advice that you've ever received? The best advice I've received, and I received it recently, was from a client of mine who is actually a, a marketing expert. And I had some questions for her around this new site. And her advice was, be yourself. And I think that is hugely important for people in the online world because you see so much hype out there and so much marketing speak and um, things that feel false. And when you let your own personality shine through and uh, you're real and authentic with the people that you're connecting with, it makes such a huge difference. People want to know the person behind um, the blog or the product or the book. They want to know the real you. I love that answer because it is so important to be genuine and to be yourself. And that answer just also leads us to the fact that if you are really engaging with your clients, with other people in the community, you're always going to be learning. And you've been doing this for quite some time now. And just recently, you've heard what you would quote unquote call it the best advice you ever received. And it was from one of your clients who you were giving advice to. So it's so important to engage, to talk, to just have conversations with people in the industry. And I definitely applaud you for that. Well, and I would add to that, that it's really important never to think that you were too big um, to keep learning, that you're too big to hear something new from somebody who is a smaller blogger or a younger person or less experienced, because everyone has years and years of something behind them. Um, and their something behind them is different from yours. And so, um, you know, I've learned so much from people who are a lot younger than me. You know, I've learned from people in their 20s things that um, have been life changing. So it's not it's not just, um, you know, learning from from the mentors that are hugely successful. It's learning from from anyone, from their own struggles and, and their own um, journeys along the way. And that really does tie back into the fact of be a genuine person. In the short time that we spent together, I can truly tell, Barry, that you are of the mindset, be humble, be happy. You're a humble person, and that's a great aspect to that, and that allows you to be open to this kind of information and knowledge from people who, even if they are paying you for your advice, you realize that there can be a, a two-way street of dissemination of information. Absolutely. What is something that's working for you or your business right now? Something really big that's working for me is the idea of focus. Um, this is something Leo Babauta has talked about for a long time, and, and reading his book called Focus has been very helpful for me. You know, there's so many things when you're running an online business that – that pull you in different directions and distract you, you know, and there's so many, you read so many things that tell you what you should be doing and what you should be focusing on. And you need to handle this social media or uh, that new plugin. And it's easy to get uh, fractured and distracted, but I'm really learning to narrow down my day to what are the top three things I need to accomplish and focus intently on those things um, throughout the day and, and complete them without getting distracted. And I try to clear my desk off, shut down, you know, different tabs and browsers on my computer and really just focus intently on the task at hand. I love the word focus. Personally, I love that word. Do you know what that famous acronym for focus is? Tell me. Follow one course until success. Ah, yeah, I love that. I don't know <laughs> why I've never heard that before, but that's great. I may, can I steal that for my blog? 100%. You don't even have to link to me, but you can. No, just kidding. <laughs> I will. I don't mind linking at all, John. <laughs> that is funny. So this is something new that I've just recently thrown into the lightning round. So I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but I think it'll be something you'll be able to come up with pretty quickly, just being engaged as you are in the online world. Do you have a resource you can recommend to our listeners that you really 
love or that you really quote unquote can't live without? Uh, there's so many of them. Um, you know, I would definitely say that think traffic is a resource that, um, I refer to that site every single day because there's something on there that helps me understand how to build my business. That's a great resource. And I also love smart passive income. That's a great resource. Um, yeah, those are the two that are my main go-to places when I want to, to learn something new I, and feel like I'm learning something coming from people with integrity that I can trust. Perfect. Thank you for that. Sure. What is the best business book that you've read in the last six months? Um, for me, there's so many great ones. Uh, the one standout for me in the last six months is a book called Super Coach uh, by a, a great coach called Michael Neal. Uh, and it's really a, it's not only a resource for coaches, it's, it helps coaches um, really learn how to teach other people to live their best lives. But anyone can read it to learn more about how to transform your thinking, um, your relationships, your productivity, you know, just how to stretch yourself in general and, and become the person that you know that yourself to be inside but are having trouble realizing. Wonderful. I will absolutely link that up in the show notes. Great. The last question, Barry, is my favorite, but it's kind of a tricky one. So you can take your time, digest it before you answer. Okay. If you woke up tomorrow morning and you still had all of the experience, knowledge, and money that you currently have right now, but everything about your business had completely disappeared, leaving you essentially with a clean slate, which is where many of our listeners find themselves today, mm -hmm. what would you do in the next seven days? Okay. Well, then th that makes it fairly easy because I would rebuild a site um, very similar to what I'm doing right now with BarryDavenport.com, setting myself up as an expert, um, it, you know, creating something called an expert site, which uh, presents yourself as the expert in a very narrow niche. niche. Um, for me, it's helping people find and live their passion. I would hire a designer to help me uh, get the site up and running. Uh, I'd probably immediately start offering my coaching services on the site so I could bring in some income right away as I begin to build courses and write books and continue to write articles. Um, I'd probably write a free guide or some kind of free product uh, to provide uh, to subscribers in exchange for their subscription email. Um, and then I'd probably begin connecting with other bloggers and mentors and other people to start creating connections and buzz around what I'm doing um, by offering maybe interviews or guest posts, that kind of thing, uh, to spread the word and maybe do some focus on social media. So that's a lot <laughs> in seven days, but um, that's, that's what You'd I would You get to work, do. basically. Yeah, I would get to work. <laughs> So, Barry, you've given us some great actionable advice today, and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one last piece of guidance, then give yourself a plug, and then we'll say goodbye. One last piece of guidance would be don't give up. That It takes some time. You, you're not going to like start making millions in your first six months. You need to really give yourself a year or even two years to start building that business and treat it like you would any other small business that you're creating. You know, give it focus and energy. You have to put a little bit of cash into it, not as much as a traditional business, but you do have to put some into it. And then focus on the task at hand. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other, focus on what you're doing, and keep moving forward. And before you know it, you'll look up and you have a successful business on your hands. Barry, thank you so much for joining us. I've so enjoyed this interview and getting to chat with you has really been a pleasure. We here at Fire Nation will catch you on the flip side. Fire Nation, thank you so much for joining us today. Are you interested in learning five ways to make $500 this month? How about five productivity tips that will help you today? Well, that and more is my free gift to you when you go to eofire.com and subscribe to Fire Nation. Lastly, for that entrepreneur ready to take it to the next level, visit ignitemastermind.com, join our elite mastermind community, and watch your business or business idea explode. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.